Hello, I'm Jose Navia, one of the cardiothoracic surgeons here at the Cleveland Clinic. I'm specialized in complex cardiac surgery, reoperation, aortic, mitral, and tracheal valve repair, as well as endocarditis by surgery. In this particular case, I would like to share and show with you is a patient has a tracheal valve endocarditis due to the infections of pacemaker lead and ICD leads. Infections of permanent patient lead and other central venous catheter can infect the tricuspid valve and unfortunately, this becomes more prevalent. A sterilization of the infected tricuspid valve is a treatment of choice. However, when pacemaker lead infection is spread to the tricuspid valve or to the cell valve apparatus, or when the vegetation are present, or the patient present deterioration of the clinical condition, a surgical intervention is indicated. This is a 64 years old man who has a history of ischemic cardiomyopathy and multiple episodes of ventricular tachycardia, so dual chamber ICD and RCT pacemaker was inserted. The patient was admitted to the Cleveland Clinic with dyspnea, New York Heart Association Functional Class 3, fatigue, and discontinued fever for about six months. On the first day of admission, blood culture were positive for Staphylococcus ominis, and daptomycin was started. The PA and lateral chest x-ray show cardiomegaly and a small bilateral pleural effusion with pulmonary vascular redistribution from congestive heart failure, elevation of the left hemidiaphragm, implantal cardiac defibrillator, right and right ventricle lead, as well as corneal sinus and epicardial lead were in satisfactory position. Transthoracic and transesophageal echocardiogram demonstrate multiple 2 by 4 centimeter of mobile vegetations attached to the pacemaker lead and to the anterior and septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve, causing severe tricuspid regurgitation. The 3D echocardiogram shows the tumor vegetation moving freely in the right atrium. A surgical intervention was indicated after the new TE control revealed persistent enlarging vegetations on the tricuspid valve, severe tricuspid regurgitation, and worsened patient clinical condition. The surgical procedure was conducted with a primary median sternotomy incision. The ascending aorta, superior vena cava, and inferior vena cava were cannulated. The right atrium is open, and a tumor vegetation between 2 to 4 centimeters are found attached to the patient leads, as well as to the septal and anterior tricuspid valve leaflet. The infected tumor vegetation are cleaned off from the leads, and the distal end of the patient lead is carefully pulled off from the coronary sinus. The fibrotic adhesin structure are removed from the lead and the lead proximal end are cut. As you can see, the ICD lead and the vegetation are attached to the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Then the ICD lead is carefully separated from the septal leaflet attachment and the fibrotic adhesion structure are removed from the lead. And finally, the lead is carefully pulled off from the right ventricle subvalvular apparatus and the papillary muscle. The septal leaflet area where the ICD lead was attached is deeply ulcerated, as well as the free margin of the leaflet with multiple vegetation, so this infected area is removed. We can also see the septal leaflet cordae rupture that caused severe septal leaflet prolapse and severe tricuspid regurgitation. The same reconstructive technique is used to repair the anterior leaflet
the infected area of the leaflet is carefully and completely removed, leaving the healthy tissue for repair. A triangle piece of autolith pericardio is used to reconstruct the anterior leaflet. Stage sutures are placed on the anterior leaflet corda in order to obtain good exposure. A 5-0 etibon running suture technique is used to reconstruct the anterior leaflet defect. Excessive pericardial patch is tailored to geometric reconstruction the anterior leaflet without the need of using synthetic material. Then we proceed to carefully remove the infected area of the septal leaflet, leaving healthy leaflet tissue for repair. Stay sutures are placed on the septal leaflet corda in order to obtain good exposure. A triangle piece of autolith pericardium is used to reconstruct the septal leaflet. A 5-0 etibon running suture technique is used to reconstruct the leaflet without the need of using synthetic material. A saline solution irrigation test demonstrates an incompetent tricuspid valve, so a 5-0 Goretex artificial cordite is used to repair the septal leaflet prolapse by placing a figure 8 stitch technique on the papillary muscle without pledget, and back to the free edge of the native leaflet, including the autologous pericardial patch, for attachment. A primary native cordial of the septal leaflet is used as a guidance to provide the same reference lengths of the new cordite. The choice not to replace the native valve was to avoid valve relay complication and the high risk of recurrent endocarditis. The diameter of the tricuspid valve was enlarged and a saline solution irrigation test demonstrated leaking tricuspid valve. So a rigid annuloplastic ring is needed to stabilize the tricuspid repair and to eliminate the tricuspid valve regulation. So, two otacron stitches are placed in the tricuspid valve annulus in a standard fashion. The tricuspid valve annulus is sizes for a 28 CE ring. Then the stitches are passed through the ring. The ring is seated and the sutures are tied. After the surgical valve repair is complete, a saline solution irrigation test demonstrates a competent tricuspid valve repair and the sutures are cut. The radiator is closed in two layers with a 4-0 proline writing switch technique. We allow the heart to reperfuse and come off the pan with satisfactory hemodynamics. Then an active fixation epicardial lead are implanted on the inferior wall of the right ventricle and brought them subcutaneously into the left upper abdominal quadrant where a pocket for the new generator is created and a permanent pacemaker is implanted. Postoperative echocardiogram shows preserved left and right ventricle systolic function, trivial tricuspid valve regurgitation 
with normal movement of both pericardial patch reconstruction and the tricuspid valve mean gradient of 3 mm of mercury. Complex surgical reconstruction of active right side valve endocarditis due to the pacemaker lead infection can yield good early and midterm result with an aggressive and extensive debridement of all infected tissue, a complete surgical extraction of the lead under direct vision, and the use of biological tissue for repair.